Foundations play a crucial role in both the physical and spiritual realms. In the spiritual realm, they provide the stability and strength of our faith, especially during difficult times. In this video, we will be exploring the concept of foundations and how having a strong foundation can impact our spiritual journey. If you're interested in learning more about the importance of a solid foundation in faith, make sure to watch until the end. We will be joined by our Father in the Lord, Apostle Joshua Salmon, who will provide more insight on this topic. God bless you. The Bible tells us that if the foundations are destroyed, there is a serious problem. But what does this mean, and why is the concept of foundations so important in the spiritual realm? Foundation simply means the point of origin, the starting point. In architecture, the foundation is the load-bearing part of a building, usually invisible to the eye. When the Bible talks about foundations, it refers to the starting point, the foundation of a person's faith and spiritual life. If this foundation is faulty, there must be a way to correct it and see the mighty and outstretched arm of God at work. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus teaches about the importance of foundations in building. He says that no matter how well constructed a building is, if it is built on a faulty foundation, it is guaranteed to fail. He uses the analogy of a wise man who built his house on a rock and another who built his house on sand. When the rains and winds came, only the house built on the rock stood firm. The same is true in our spiritual lives. No matter how strong our faith may seem, if it is built on a faulty foundation, it is prone to collapse. The psalmist understood this principle, saying that we must have respect for the covenant, not just our emotions and prayer requests. In Isaiah chapter 38, when Hezekiah was told to put his house in order because he would not recover, he remembered how he had walked diligently for God and done good in his sight. He used this as a basis to plead for his life, recognizing that there are rules of engagement in the kingdom of God. As powerful as God is, he did not simply cast sin out of humanity and wipe Satan away. He submitted to the rules of the spiritual realm and sent Jesus to redeem us through his death and resurrection. This shows that there is a deeper, spiritual dynamic at play in the world, and it is important for us to understand and respect these dynamics if we want to see results in our lives. So, how do we ensure that our spiritual foundations are solid? Jesus gives us a clue in Matthew 7 verses 24 to 25, saying, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. In other words, our spiritual foundations are built on the words of Jesus and the way we live our lives in accordance with them. But it's not just about following rules or performing good deeds. Our foundation must also be rooted in a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This means confessing our sins and surrendering our lives to Him, allowing Him to transform us and make us new. Once we have a solid foundation in Christ, we can weather the storms of life that come our way. The rain, floods, and winds may beat against us, but our faith will not falter because it is built on the rock of Jesus. However, it's important to remember that just because we have a solid foundation, it doesn't mean that we won't face challenges or setbacks in life. The Bible tells us that we will have troubles in this world, John 16 verse 33, but it also promises that we can find peace and strength in Jesus, Philippians 4 verse 7. So, let us strive to build our faith on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ, His words, and His sacrifice for us. Let us have respect for the covenant and the spiritual realm, understanding that there are certain rules of engagement at play. Let us seek to grow in our relationship with God, submitting to His will and allowing Him to transform us. As we do so, we can have confidence that our faith will stand firm, no matter what challenges come our way. We can trust in God's faithfulness and His promise to be with us always, even in the darkest of times. 
This is not to say that building a solid foundation in our faith is easy. It requires dedication, discipline, and a willingness to follow Jesus and his teachings. But the rewards are worth it. When we have a strong foundation, we can experience the fullness of life that God has for us, and we can be a beacon of hope and light to those around us. So, let us take the time to examine the foundations of our faith, making sure that they are rooted in Jesus and His Word. Let us seek to build our lives on the rock of Christ, knowing that when we do, we can stand firm and weather any storm that comes our way. As the saying goes, a house is only as strong as its foundation. Let us make sure that our spiritual foundation is solid so that we can experience the blessings and abundance that God has in store for us. It's important to regularly examine and assess the foundations of our faith to make sure that they are solid. This can involve reading and studying the Bible, spending time in prayer and contemplation, and seeking the guidance and counsel of mature believers. It's also important to surround ourselves with other believers who can encourage and support us in our faith journey. Belonging to a church community and participating in fellowship with other believers can provide accountability, guidance, and a sense of belonging. It's natural to have questions and doubts as we grow in our faith, and it's okay to seek answers and clarification. In fact, these questions can often lead us to a deeper understanding and appreciation of God and His ways. However, it's important to remember that our faith is not based on our own understanding or reasoning. It's based on the truth and reality of who God is and what He has done for us through Jesus Christ. As we seek to grow in our faith, it's essential to anchor ourselves in this truth and not be swayed by the shifting opinions and ideologies of the world. Another way to strengthen our spiritual foundations is by serving others and living out our faith in practical ways. When we use our gifts and abilities to bless and serve others, we not only demonstrate the love of Christ, but we also grow in our own faith and understanding of God's purpose for our lives. In summary, the foundations of our faith are crucial to the stability and growth of our spiritual lives. By regularly examining and strengthening these foundations, we can experience the fullness of life that God has for us and stand firm in the midst of life's challenges. Let us seek to build our faith on the solid foundation of Jesus and His Word, and let us seek to serve and honor God in all that we do. Believers, join us as we hear more from our Father in the Lord, Apostle Joshua Salmon, as he delves deeper into this topic. Apostle will be sharing the importance of having a solid foundation, the consequences of a faulty foundation, and the role of the rules of engagement in the spiritual realm. Apostle will also encourage us to respect the covenant and understand the operation of the spiritual realm in order to see results in our lives. He will remind us of the need to build our faith on a solid foundation, anchored in Jesus and His Word. We encourage you to give your full attention and be present in the moment as you listen to this message. This teaching is sure to inspire and challenge you, and we believe it has the power to transform your life. To get the most out of this teaching, we recommend having your pens and notebooks ready to take notes and jot down any thoughts or insights that come to you. This will help you retain and reflect on the message long after it has been shared. It's also important to approach this message with an open and receptive heart. Be willing to listen and consider new ideas, even if they challenge your current beliefs or understanding. This is an opportunity to grow in your faith and deepen your relationship with God, and we believe it will be well worth the effort. So let's give our full attention and engage with this message as Apostle Joshua Salmon teaches us. May God bless you and guide you as you listen and learn. Amen. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the... It didn't say, what can the people do? The righteous, even though they are the righteous, by the time the foundation is destroyed, the Bible says there is serious problem. 
the word foundation is a very important word i wish i had the time to teach but this is a miracle service tonight foundation simply means the point of origin foundation means the starting point architecturally foundation means the load bearing part of a building usually invisible so when the bible talks about foundations he means the starting point that there is something about the starting point of a man and that if it is faulty there has to be a rule of engagement to correct it in other words to see the mighty and outstretched arm of god hallelujah in matthew chapter 7 from verse 24 jesus himself was teaching and he said it does not matter the dexterity of your architecture no matter how true how powerful what you build is if it is built on a faulty foundation he gives you a guarantee that something will go wrong i will liken him he says to a wise man which built his house on a rock to 27 next verse the bible says the rain descended the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell not not because of the paint not because of the strength of the materials that were used simply because it was on a very solid foundation next verse 26 it says so also there is someone who built his house what was common with both of them is that they built and they built well there was no problem with the building maximum architecture was employed in the building but the problem was the foundation listen very carefully the same thing that happened to the one who had a house on the rock happened to the one who had a house on sand and the bible says the last verse 27 that the same rain the same winds the same floods came and the bible says it fell and so great was the fall of it can i tell you the truth faulty spiritual foundations have prophetic spiritual implications to the point that it can seem to cripple the hand of god over the life of a man most believers do not understand that the realm of the spirit has a predefined modus operandi and if you do not know how the realm of the spirit operates you can keep wishing for things to happen and keep being embarrassed forever the psalmist said listen if i keep using emotions and i keep complaining and i keep grumbling i may not receive any result but i need to drop all this aside and say have respect for the covenant not just my tears not just what i feel not just my prayer request are we together when hezekiah in chapter 38 of isaiah when isaiah came and prophesied to him and said put your house in order you will not recover the bible says he turned his face to the wall and said remember how i have walked diligently before you in truth and with a perfect heart and i have done that which is good in your sight he didn't say remember i am a king he needed to use a basis to say i can't die not based on this there are rules of engagement in this kingdom now let me tell you the truth as powerful as god is as powerful and mighty as god is he didn't cast sin out of man why will god seem to be so helpless when he was the one who created man he was the one who created the devil that caused man to fall if god wiped the whole the whole earth and heaven why did he not just wipe satan away and start afresh if i were god why would i go through the labor of coming to die as creator he was not co-creator he was creator and is creator you thought he would just say sin get out of man satan vanish dematerialize and go away i am god is still within his power is there anything too hard but even god had to submit to the modus operandi of the spirit are we together now negotiated and sent jesus jesus came through the womb of a virgin walked 30 years 
died, was buried, went to the grave, all to save man's sin. Was it that hard for God? When you understand that, you will stop the realm of wishing and hoping that things will change. God, you are mighty. It does not take you anything to lift me. You are right, but you will still remain in that situation because that is not what compels the mighty hand of God. Let me tell you the truth. God is touched by his love, but he arises based on his honor to the modus operandi of the realm of the spirit. Have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are a habitation of cruelty. Many of us come from families that have fraternized with darkness foundationally. Many of us right now are sitting on all kinds of demonic things that we have not engaged the word of God and spiritual understanding to bring liberty practically. And yet we keep saying it does not matter. And our lives keep showing that there is a legitimate ground for the continuity of certain things. Please listen carefully. I, when it has to do with oppression and the rules of the spirit, it does not care whether you are a preacher. It does not care whether you are sincere. The Bible says the ones who will be asking questions are even the righteous. That if the foundation be destroyed, it is the righteous who will even be complaining. Hallelujah. For instance, in Joshua chapter 6, from verse 26, when Joshua destroyed Jericho, he made a pronouncement by the Spirit. Listen carefully. Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cause be the man before the Lord that rises up and builded this city, Jericho. He said, He shall lay the foundation in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. Joshua made a pronouncement that anybody that rises to rebuild Jericho again, as that person lays the foundation, he will lay it on the life of his firstborn. And as he completes it, he will complete it on the life of his lastborn. 1 Kings chapter 16. Let me show you something. Ahab verse 33 now. The man called Ahab, the Bible says he made a grove and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Read verse 34, please. Or let me just read it and you listen. He said, in his days did Hiel, the Bethelite, build Jericho. Is that in your Bible? The Bible says he laid the foundation in Abiram, his firstborn. If you were the firstborn of that man, it was not your fault to be the firstborn. You just know that as soon as they started that project, a mysterious disease will come upon you and you'll be wondering, what did I do wrong? Not knowing that a speaking is looking for you. And you may go and say, but medical doctors will check you. What is wrong with the machine cannot diagnose what is wrong. Not knowing that the person who spoke has died, yet the prophetic word is still in force. Abiram started getting mysteriously sick until he died, the firstborn. And the man still refused in defiance. He set up the gates thereof. Now, the Bible does not tell us whether the man was aware of the prophecy or not. Whether he was aware or he was not aware, as far as the prophecy was concerned, whoever triggers it, let it work. Ah. Please listen, please listen, please listen, please listen. Because this is not about being sincere and insincere. What did Abiram do to die? Please talk to me. Did he kill anybody? Did he look for anybody's trouble? His only offense was he was born from a family that decided to fight the prophetic word. The Bible says, when he set up the gate, his younger son, exactly what happened to the elder brother, now started happening to the younger brother. What is wrong with you again? I'm sure the mother will say, let's rush to the hospital now. According to the word of the Lord, 
which he spake by Joshua the son of Nun. Hallelujah. Don't you dare think it does not matter that our forefathers buried people alive. And while those people were being buried, they said we, we, we are dying. But the ones who will be alive will be worse than dead. And they said we don't care. When they were shouting at Jesus, crucify him, they didn't know what they were saying. And for many people, we say it does not matter. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 9. There are many people who have subjected themselves in ignorance or by reason of the things that happen in time past. It says, when thou art come to the land which the Lord giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times, an enchanter, a witch to 12, 11 please, or a charmer, a consultant with familiar spirit, or a wizard, a necromancer, verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God will drive them out from before thee. Hallelujah. I think I shared a story here in Koinonia. And let me say it quickly before we begin to pray. About someone who... A young lady, a, a young woman who wanted a child desperately. And she went to somebody and the person said, well, I know what to do and you will have a child. But that when this child is 20, 20 on the dot, make sure you return this child back for some kind of sacrifice that will be done. And the woman looked at the old man and said, 20 years from now, you probably will be dead. She pointed at a tiny boy who was playing there and said, this boy will be alive. He's the one who will be here. This is a case that I handled. It's not a story they told me. When this lady was 20 on the dot, may God help you to come and stand near her and say you like her. You see what will happen to you. You came innocently, oh, it's not like any you are bad, you are not bad. Church born again person just came and things started going haywire. And then people started advising the mother, say quietly go to that man and resolve whatever it is or his son. So someone recommended her that she would come to me. When she came and I looked at a lady, wonderful lady, wonderful woman, the realm of the spirit doesn't care. Did you hear what I said? Wonderful lady, wonderful man, the realm of the spirit does not care. Foundations are powerful. Foundations are powerful. Regions have foundational problems. You know the power of foundations by the patterns that follow. The patterns, as it happened to son, it happened to father, it happened to elder brother, families where women feed the men, no matter how hard working the men are, something must happen. Hallelujah. But this is why God has ordained a meeting like this. Because in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, everything that needs to be corrected, for your glory to rise everything that needs to be put in place this night in the presence of the angels and the presence of the mighty one who is the king of glory it must be corrected this night <laughs> hallelujah i came from a background and a family and a region where i didn't see some things happen to people I had to sit down and study it sincerely and, and to be honest myself that if I have to rise to a position where I'll be able to serve and honor the name of the Lord at a global scale, there are things that need to be corrected and done. I've told you my story. As a man of God, demons used to oppress me. Most people will not tell you the truth. They didn't care that I was anointed. It didn't stop the sick from being healed though. Yet I will go to bed. And here comes this wicked spirit. And because of the prophetic inclination, I would see them. I thought it was so with everyone. How can I go and preach and a spirit is running out in a meeting? And
and yet coming to me in a room and I'm driving it and it's not going. Have respect for the covenant. I know one, a very proud gentleman years ago, he walked into my room. I used to counsel in a small room that time and he walked to me and I saw a spirit standing behind him and he was sharing with me some of his challenges and I said, can I pray for you? It looks like there's something. He said, no, 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 I don't believe that. I said, okay, no problem. I'm sorry. Let me just pray. As I said in Jesus name, the last thing that gentleman will remember was maybe like 30 or so minutes later on when he even recovered for the next three days he kept texting me what happened he said this is everything i believe i don't know where to start from before we continue if you are feeling blessed by this message we encourage you to share your blessings with others by liking this video this small act of kindness can help to spread the message even further and reach even more people who may benefit from it by liking this video you are not only expressing your appreciation for the message, but you are also helping to support the work of the ministry. When a video receives likes, it can trigger the algorithm and increase its visibility on social media platforms. This can help to bring more people into contact with the message and potentially impact their lives for the better. So if you are feeling blessed, we encourage you to be a blessing to others by liking this video. You never know how far your simple act of kindness may reach and who it may touch. May God bless you and continue to guide you as you seek to spread his message of love and hope. Let me tell you the truth. Foundations are real. Foundations are very, very real. Hallelujah. Foundations are real. You find patterns, you find all kinds of demonic things that seem to veto the efforts of men, regardless what they do. There are sincere men of God who have graces that should be speaking across the globes. But these foundations, because of an incorrect foundation that has not been dealt with, with understanding. The devil does not need to cause medical problem, a problem of delays and pain and all of that. He doesn't need to do that. All he needs to do is to ensure that that faulty foundation remains. The, the faulty foundation will manufacture itself many kinds of wrong problems. Do you cut a tree by removing the leaves one by one? Think how burdensome that labor is. Foundation. By the time you uproot it, even if the leaves are still green, just leave them as a matter of time. They will dry up because it has lost contact. The same way that tree fell, this is how I declare over someone whatever has connected you in the name of jesus it gives way this night listen carefully this is someone's deliverance already i've shared with you you see by reason of of the prophetic i have i have encountered many spirits I don't share all these testimonies because I want people, people's faith to be grounded on scripture, not just on prophetic experiences. Are we together yes but I, I i usually repeat the ones i've shared for emphasis that i was praying one night and all of a sudden my ceiling just disappears and i see this strange creature having an eye as big as a human head two eyes fierce anger help them please 
with the tail that looks like a dinosaur the tail had its own life separate from the creature and it was looking at me like i'm looking at you fuming and he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that is the spirit that controls poverty across territories let me speak to someone whatever has kept your family down honestly in the name of jesus christ the one who is the lifter of men i decree and declare every spirit lets you go now lets you go now he must let you go now hallelujah sit down please many years ago I came into this city and usually when I come when I'm traveling I would just take a cab moving across the city I would take a cab and I remember one of the drivers that you know I took the cab he was talking to me and he said I listened to him he was speaking in broken English and he said there is a spirit in this city that never allows money to stay in the hands of people this was a driver speaking and he said he would get money and yet not be able to do anything so i think maybe they consulted you know all these people they believe in everything so they consulted a medium or some kind of thing that now told him that the moment he has money he should run out of the city and go and start something and he said he was almost completing his house now you don't have to be under that kind of threat there's authority in christ but it comes through light it does not come through desire the challenge with believers is that we make bold claims of the manifestation of the promises without the requisite level of light and illumination. God forbid, I can't be in this situation. What is the light that supports that statement? Otherwise, you will be wasting your time. Are we together? John 1, 5, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There are families that it is not sickness that plagues them, but this spirit of poverty. Even if you make so, that someone in that family a director in NMPC, they will still be poor. Are we together? There are many people who will bring certificates for you. Three doctors, PhD in a family, and none of them has a good job. What kind of thing is that? There are people who have been in this city. The land itself has rejected them. Everything fights you. Everything fights you. Mm -mm. Is someone learning? Maybe there's someone watching, there's someone following, and you're saying, Apostle, you are just describing my situation. As a family, we, we don't know what the problem is. Don't know what the problem is you take in and after two three months here comes this strange and wicked spirit and somebody comes to molest you and by the next day or a few days after you lose the pregnancy that one will need more than medical attention that one will need a miracle service like this in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i know someone who vowed to help a man and I'm telling you, I, I kid you not, by the next day, the person went to the office and the person said, I cannot remember seeing you. Abba! You can't remember seeing me? When you said I should come with my CV tomorrow, for instance, and give me a job, what happened? Hmm. Hallelujah. What of people who actually get things? but they don't have longevity in their life. I don't mean physical longevity. Nothing stays long. The moment they have money, just start praying for them because it's a matter, in one month it goes down. Once you give them a position, just know that in, in two or three weeks in that office, something must happen and they must lose it. It's like if you don't lose good things, the realm of the spirit is at a, a state of unrest. If there is anything that is on anybody's head here that followed you for this meeting i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit i lift it up from you now i lift it up from you now i lift it up from you now
Hallelujah. I know someone who traveled abroad responsibly. Just when they were checking people at the immigration, I think I've shared the story. They were looking for somebody who was a thief. And they saw him and I think... was a up to 50 percent resemblance with the thief and they moved him to one room just like that i don't look like a rich man i don't look like somebody who is impacting the world my face now looks like a thief i ah, know every wrong every fail in the name of jesus that is programming evil over you that makes evil to look like good and good to look like evil i declare that veil is torn from your face torn from your face torn from your face torn from your face hallelujah please hear me true story someone was begging for money from somebody to take care of an emergency in the hospital this is a true story and when the person was doing the transfer something came on the person and he missed the account by one digit and he sent the money to someone else this is a true story see the thing I've the things I've seen in this life bar by reason of ministry how do you plan to bless someone then is when is now your turn they miss it by a digit what was that other person praying that his own account was the one that came? Listen, do you know that God is called, you read your Bible, the sons of Jacob. I hope you know Jacob had 12 sons. Is that true? The first of them was Reuben. Read your Bible. You are Bible students. Jesus is never called the lion of the tribe of Reuben. What happened to the firstborn? Not even Simeon. How did Judah come out to become the lion of the tribe of Judah? When Jacob was blessing his sons, you read your Bible now, he looked at Reuben and he said, you are my strength. You are the, the excellency of my strength, but you are as unstable as the wind. He said, thou shall not excel. And even Jesus, when he came, he refused to identify with that man. He would have polluted his own ministry. not lion of the tribe of reuben not lion of the tribe of simeon lion of the tribe of judah so don't say we are the most enlightened family in our area the realm of the spirit rearranges based on the covenant you are standing on did you hear what i said it is, you can claim whatever you want to claim the realm of the spirit with digital precision will rearrange everything based on the, the code that it was programmed with that means it is possible to be a man physically but the realm of the spirit brings you to a position of a woman and you will find out that you cannot feed your wife because the realm of the spirit does not yet authorize and recognize you as the abba the bread provider you can be a graduate in a family and the one who takes care of them is the one that did not even go to primary school because in the realm of the spirit that person is standing on a covenant that the realm of the spirit recognizes that one as a breadwinner
I'm saying that because we're about to pray. This miracle service, don't worry, we'll finish on time. Don't say I'm still teaching. This is the deliverance you are receiving. No, tonight you have to be angry. Enough is enough. Enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? Do you know how many gifted people are in this nation and in Africa? World ministers, music ministers. These are people that are supposed to be at a global level. But this foundation has kept them. You talk with them, you are like, what are you still doing here? There are people who will listen to you and say you are the exact person our company is looking for. And after three years, they will pass you every day and never call you for a job. They will bring an ignorant person and train the person, send the person to France, return the person back and give the person a job. Whereas you already have the qualification. How about ministers of the gospel? Just because you are sincere, let me tell you the truth. Liking you is a grace. Make no mistakes about that. Do you, liking you and receiving of your ministry, generationally speaking, is a grace. You can be sincere and do all you want to do. It will still not work. Is someone learning now? wicked spirits programmed in foundations it's like they tie you with a rope just when you are moving you are about to obtain this the way it pulls your father it pulls you on your way going whether you are a preacher it pulls you back just when you are reaching your destiny helper it pulls you back in the name of Jesus whatever has tied you I cut it away from you right now I cut it away from you right now I'm saying it again I cut it away from you see listen can I tell you believe me when I tell you you can know that you have had victory over your foundation the result will speak instantly a job that was difficult suddenly comes listen job chapter 42 give us verse 10 and 11 let me show you something you can know when a demonic resistance holding you has left the realm of the spirit and the physical realm will bear witness because the earth listen to me the earth even water is a witness and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends so the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had but 11 is where I'm really going to what suddenly happened to him you can know captivity has turned around watch this then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance be for question what drove them you think they just left you think they did every one of them started feeling like hi what is why is job's issue coming to my heart that's because something was corrected in the realm of the spirit watch this the bible says they did eat bread with him in his house 
they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought unto him and then this is how God restored him every man also gave him a piece of money so they had it before while he was suffering the same way your uncle has it and is aware that you are in this city you have sent a text sent a text stop sending a text come for miracle service carry an anointing upon your head i hope you believe what i'm teaching you everyone gave him a piece of money what kind of business was he going to start in that state of pain how long would it take him so the lord restored in the realm of the spirit but physically things started happening can i tell you the truth you can know doctors when a patient has malaria how do you know the patient has malaria or typhoid there are signs is that true he goes to the hospital and there's what they call vital signs am i right medical people you now begin to check uh -uh. temperature is running the person is um maybe vomiting stooling or doing whatever how do you know the patient is recovering you know the patient is recovering because things begin to change are there times when you take drugs and find out that the drug did not affect the intended change you still go back to the doctor and say this drug did not work they will now do a further test and say ah we thought it was this so just because it was a drug did not mean it solved every problem as far as your body is concerned you didn't take a drug even though you were on one week medication your body did not recognize it because it was not the solution don't say i have been praying don't say they prayed for me when you take malaria drug for for what now typhoid it may not work but it is still drug tonight the right drug is coming on your head yes, sir. in the name of jesus christ as i'm declaring over you you may not know what is changing for some of you as i'm declaring it's not only your health by tomorrow if phone calls you will wake up to phone calls and say what is happening to me what is changing in my life listen please hear me believers let me tell you the truth by the power of the holy spirit i've been mandated to insist that your life produces results hallelujah undeniable unquestionable results some of you by reason of what is on your life you are supposed to be building houses for people not even looking for rent honestly because in terms of value you have worked on yourself let me pray for someone again what is sitting on your destiny that will not let you and your family rise by the power that is in the name of jesus here at koinonia all oh, be lifted from your life be lifted from your life be lifted from your life that demonic embargo
cause of the firstborn, the cause of the lastborn, the cause of siblings, the cause of idolatry, the cause of necromancy, the cause of fathers sacrificing children to be able to get money. It may not be my fault, but the Bible tells me I have an advocate with the Father, even Jesus the righteous. I decree and declare already for someone that embargo on your life, that programming, it must give way this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe in what I'm telling you? What is there about the mighty hand of God that you cannot see? But let me tell you, if the foundations be destroyed, when the foundation is destroyed, God wants to step in, but there is a limitation because the covenant does not allow him to operate based on that. What the Holy Spirit can do is to grant you access to light, to know what you need to do that takes away the barrier. Are we together now? Yes. Between you and God and your breakthrough and testimony, there are barriers, principally foundations. There are foundations that keep speaking woes of ill health. There are foundations that speak woes of failure. The only way you eat is by being a servant. You never can rise to a position of influence. Whether as a man of God, as a businessman, it does not care whether you are in America, whether you are wherever, it does not matter. Do you know Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Didn't you see what happened to Samson? Was Samson not a Nazarene? You think Samson just lay down and told a lady to cut his hair? You think he was that stupid? When you have that kind of power, will you be that foolish? Don't downplay the power of foundations. It can keep quiet for 10 years. You will think you are fine. But by the 11th year, it will come and pull you down and cancel everything. The house that fell, that was built on sand, it didn't fall from day one. There was a time that both houses were nice. If they even told you to pay for the house, you may prefer the house on sand to the house on the rock. Wait until the storms come. Wait until the wind blows. That's why you can see someone who is a billionaire for 25 years. Then by the 26th year, the foundation says I've been quiet. And in one year, everything goes down. One year, shame comes. A ministry can blossom for many years and then it's like an ignition from the realm of the spirit and boom, just like balloon, everything goes down. But I know whom I believe and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Against that day. Against that day. We are grateful for your ongoing support as you continue to like and share this video. Your engagement helps to amplify the message and reach even more people who may be blessed by it. By liking and sharing, you are not only expressing your appreciation for the message, but you are also helping to promote the work of the ministry. When a video receives likes and shares, it can increase its visibility and reach a wider audience. This can bring more people into contact with the message and potentially impact their lives in a positive way. So we encourage you to continue liking and sharing this video as a way of supporting the ministry and spreading the message of hope and love. Your engagement is deeply appreciated and helps to further the work of sharing the love of God with others. May God bless you and guide you as you seek to make a positive impact on the world. Now there are some of you you may not be poor. Listen, we're about to pray. You may not be poor, but you never have helpers in your life. Everything you get comes directly from you. That's a terrible way to live. Everything. If a door must open, you are the one who must open it. If you must eat, it must come from your hand. You do not know the help of God. 
Hallelujah. A man of God, you are in ministry. You pay all the bills by yourself. You pay every, Nobody sees you and say, no, I believe in what you are doing. I'm standing with you. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. I know someone who was walking and what he uses for his transport from where he was staying. Sincerely speaking, at the end of it, when we calculated it, it was not more than 10,000 that was left. That means you are working, oh, but what you are earning, subtract transportation and the rest. And at the end of it, what you are really earning is 10,000. There are spirits that fight and destroy breadwinners of families. The moment it identifies that you are the one God is using to bless a family, here comes that thing. It will pull you down. So you go to a region and only find old people. Where are the young people? The spirits know that the, he will take care of Baba and Mama and it will fight you. You can see a young person sitting down and there is absolutely nothing working in his life. Two prayer points and I'll begin to minister within the time I have left. Tonight God wants to shake away this thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was told a story of, I think it was a Billy Graham Institute, that because they wanted to preserve, they wanted to preserve the institute and some of the monuments, you know, just like Baba, Baba Deboye's, you know, former house and all of that, and that they had to bring engineers. They dug through the ground and they carried the building out from the foundation and relocated it to a, a, another region and put it down there. That's right. That's what is happening to somebody this night. Yeah. Hear me? You don't renovate foundations. Uh -uh. If it is not working, there is that spiritual bulldozer that can dig to the ground and carry you. Is it not in your Bible that God can pick a man from a dunghill? It's a location and place him somewhere else. So what if I came from my region? Must I carry the cost that comes with that region? So what if my forefathers served idols? Did the realm of the spirit not hear when I made my declarations of faith? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted, ancient doors. Listen, I prayed this for myself, I prayed this for this ministry, and I said in my lifetime, I will see the glory of the Lord, and no power of darkness is going to cut short the manifestation of that glory. It does not matter what the devil wants. Listen, victory can be seen. You can know that the hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Two prayer points. And when it's time to pray, please let me plead with you in Jesus' name. If you can, for the sake of this prayer, pair yourselves into three, like we did the last time. Just these three prayer points and fire will fall in. Find anybody. If you don't have a partner, that's all right. But we are going to pray. If your neighbor is not serious, please leave him alone. We are serious. This, this, is, this is a destiny altering moment. Shani kaparaka tosiata, embrakate katosiata. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant. Right now, I declare every negative foundation, every altar speaking against me by the blood of Jesus be destroyed now go ahead and pray Destroy fighting my 
influence. What a powerful message. In summary, Apostle Joshua Salman delved into the concept of foundations in relation to our faith and spiritual lives. He emphasized the importance of having a solid foundation, as a faulty foundation can lead to problems and setbacks in our spiritual journey. He also touched on the concept of the rules of engagement in the spiritual realm and how even God, as the Creator, had to adhere to these rules in order to redeem humanity from sin. Apostle encouraged believers to have respect for the covenant and to understand the operation of the spiritual realm in order to see results in their lives. He reminded us of the importance of building our faith on a solid foundation, anchored in Jesus and His Word. We hope you enjoyed the video as much as we did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your loved ones. And please share your thoughts about the video in the comment section below. We would love to hear your insights and takeaways. Until we see you again next time, take care and God bless.